Should you white label and rebrand WordPress for your clients? Well, I think you should, but not necessarily for the same reasons that you may be thinking about. So how's that? Let's find out. Hello, I'm your host, Kate Sino. I'm a digital alchemist. And today I want to discuss about whether or not you should rebrand the WordPress admin for your clients when you hand over the website that you just created for them. See, I'm part of a few Facebook groups and almost every single day someone would come and ask how they can white label and rebrand the WordPress admin because they're scared that if their customer finds out that they're using WordPress, they'll be labeled a fraud. Uh, so this happens with WordPress, this happens with the page builder that, that they'll be using. But I always wonder, but why? Because it's like they're ashamed of using WordPress. Now, on one hand, I can understand because they think that, okay, if their customer types WordPress, they will find out that WordPress is a free tool, you know? And that's why they're scared of being labeled a fraud. And I can completely understand that, but the mindset is wrong. Because think about it. Theoretically, you could create electricity, you know, if you, if you, you live nearby a river uh, or if you're using uh, wind, you know, the force of wind, you could create electricity. So why do we have to pay for electricity? Now, if you're living off the grid, obviously this remark is not for you. But for the rest of us, why do we pay for electricity then? Well, because someone had to streamline the process, make sure that the electricity uh, works well, that you won't have power failures, and that you're safe. And that's what you're paying for. You're paying for the commodity of having uh, what's actually available in nature. But, you know, they had to come up with something uh, a commercial solution. They had to come up with something that works, something that is safe. And basically, WordPress, it's not exactly the same, but I think you know where I'm trying to get at. Yes, WordPress is free. It's open source. But it's all that's around it that, that's really the value that you bring into your client. And the best example for that is that I remember uh, I had one client, he, well, he was a lead at the time, and he wanted me to do the website for him. So when I gave him the quote, he was like, no way, man, this is way too expensive. Uh, WordPress is free. You know, I know how to do that. I've done it already. Or if I don't have the time, then, you know, someone in my family will do it. I said, fine, no, no, no problem. I wish you good luck. Um, and I even gave him some resources, you know, some, uh, some blog posts and some websites so that he could go and check for himself. Then... It was something like six months later, he came back and he was like, man, I haven't finished the website. I'm still trying to <laughs> wrap my head around all the things that I have to do. And it was something like uh, a 10 pages website. You know, it was no e-commerce. It was nothing um, specific about it. But he realized that there was a lot more than just WordPress. WordPress is great. I mean, in my opinion, WordPress is a godsend. It's really great. But WordPress is just one step in the process. I mean, it's a big step, but you also need to take care of your branding. You need to take care of the, uh, the choice of the images. You need to take care of the weight of the images. You need to take care of so many things to create a website. And actually, I've created a video just about that. And if I recall, there were 41 steps just for a simple website. And actually, I skipped a few steps. Um, that, that, you know, I just found out after I finished the, the video, some things that are so uh, common, you know, that I didn't think about it. But let's say you have between you have 40 and 50 steps just for a very simple website. So to cut the long story short, um, that, that person asked me, well, you know, the quote that you gave me six months ago, is it still valid because I want to sign it right now? You know, that's what happens when people get their hands dirty. I'm not saying they cannot do it, but it's like everybody has their own specialty, you know. I probably couldn't do what he's doing in, in his business, but I well know how to create a website and a WordPress, you know, I know how to make things work. And that's what it's all about. So there's no reason to be ashamed of using WordPress or feeling like a fraud. On the contrary, see, for the majority of your customers, they won't really care whether you're using WordPress, Squarespace, or whatever. All they want is the solution to work. They want return on investment. If they're going to pay you a grand, two grand, five grand, 10 grand for a website, they want to make that money back. 
So if you're the man or the woman for the job, and if you get them the, back their return on investment, they're gonna be happy. They couldn't care less what you're using. So in my experience, that's the case for most customers. Now, there are some customers, especially uh, at bigger companies, they know exactly what they want to use. And in my case, I decided to focus on WordPress. So if someone comes and say, I want a Magento website or I want this or that, I guess it's the end of the story. But I'm not gonna be rude. I'm gonna try to um, refer them to uh, another agency or another freelancer that I know uh, can work with that tech and that I can endorse. I wanna be helpful. But when it comes to me, I'm not gonna learn a platform just for one website. If I learn a platform, it means that I really wanna dig deep into it. And I've decided for um, my business model that I wanna work with that platform. But if it's not the case, I'm gonna to stick to WordPress. You know, so as I said, it's end of the story. Now, there are some customers, they know the tech that they wanna use and they know they, want to use, they know they want to use WordPress. So once again, then there's no problem, it's perfect. You're a WordPress consultant, they want WordPress, that's fine. Now, to come back to that question that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, what could you tell a potential client that tells you, yeah, uh, you're using WordPress, WordPress is free now, why would I need you? Well, you can tell them that basically if they had to do the same website from scratch, it would cost a lot more. And when I say a lot more, I mean a lot more. If people have to start creating a website from scratch, well, nowadays, almost nobody really starts from scratch. They'd be using a framework of some kind, but still, the price would be way different. Now, don't get me wrong, I still think that nothing beats a developer and we need developers. If we, if there were no developers, there would be no WordPress, there would be no Elementor, no, no Divi, no Brizzy, Thrive Themes, Oxygen, whatever. We need great developers. But here I'm specifically talking about WordPress consultant that focus on WordPress. So what you can tell that potential customer when they ask questions about WordPress, well, you can tell them that for the same budget, you'll be able to achieve a lot more with WordPress because there are many features that you won't have to develop from scratch uh, and you focus more on making, making sure everything works well together, making sure everything looks nice, um, that it matches their vis visual identity, that the website is fast enough, um, maybe you also take care of on-page SEO and that kind of things. The next thing that you can tell to that customer is that just imagine that sometime in the future, they wanna add a booking engine to their website. Now, if the website had been created from scratch or with an obscure CMS that nobody knows, more than likely they would have to ask you to develop a booking engine and that costs a lot of money. Now, with WordPress, more than likely there, there are a few dozens or even more booking engine plugins. So your job would be to find the right one, make sure it works well, and the rest of the money they can spend on other things. They can spend on brand identity, they can spend on other features. So if you always have your customer's interests uh, in mind, they will start to understand why it's interesting to work with WordPress. Now, another advantage of WordPress that you can tell that potential client is the fact that WordPress is powering one third of the internet. And that also means that there are a lot of developers, a lot of WordPress consultants all over the world. So if for any reasons you need to stop working together, maybe because you stop offering the service or maybe because you've decided to part ways. I mean, that's the kind of thing that happens. Well, if that happened, they won't be locked into an obscure system. They won't be locked with something that no one except you know how to use. And that's that's a major advantage if you think about it because you're playing the transparency game. You're so confident in your services that you're open to work with WordPress because you know there's a lot of competition and if they, for some reason they decide to stop working with you, they're free. And that's great because I've seen countless times um, agencies that create websites and they try to lock the customers in. Less and less agencies do that, but I still see it happening today. And when that happens, the customer feels ripped off because uh, first of all, they decide to stop the, the relationship with uh, those agencies or those freelancers. And sometimes it's for good reasons, sometimes not, but 
they're already in a situation of conflict and they decide to stop working with them. And then when they, they move on to another agency or uh, another freelancer, they find out that they're locked in. There's so many uh, missing pieces and then it will cost a lot more money to, to patch things up and make sure everything works well. So in that regards, WordPress is definitely an advantage. No. After having said all of that, why on earth did I tell you in the intro that, yeah, it could be interesting to white label and rebrand WordPress? And as I said, this may not be for the same reason that you may be thinking about. See, in my opinion, I don't always do that, but I'm starting to uh, white label and uh, rebrand WordPress. Actually, I'm not really white labeling it. I'm, I'm not hiding to my customers that I'm using WordPress, but the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to give them an experience with their brand. I want to be able to customize the login page. Uh, I also want to be able to customize the um, WordPress admin to their brand colors, or maybe sometimes if I'm not using their brand colors, I'll be, I'll be using um, nice palettes, easy on the eyes, and you know, it, it really gives a different feel. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm so much into WordPress that it's starting to look boring inside. So it's the same thing. So sometimes I also like to change, but the added value is to uh, make, they, make them feel at home. So for the customers that do actually uh, update the website themselves, I think it's interesting. Uh, you give them access to the login page and they see their logo, they see uh, their visual, they see their branding, then they log in. And they don't have to take care of um, WordPress news or Elementor news. And, you know, I'm proud of using WordPress. I'm proud of, I'm proud of using Elementor or the other page builders like TV and, and, and so on. But I don't want to put that in their face. Now, I'll be really open with them saying I'm using WordPress. I'm using, uh, for example, Elementor. And I'm explaining why because, and I'll make another video about that, but there is uh, the same kind of, of advantages uh, to using a page uh, builder or a theme builder. Each and every time I tell them and I give them, um, actually repeat the advantage I just to uh, told you about, I actually tell them that because I really believe it's an added value. So what I want them to, to experience uh, when I hand over the website is they're just gonna log in and they feel at home. It's their company, it's their brand colors, their logo. And that's why I said that, yeah, using a white labeling plugin can be a good idea. Now there are some uh, also some other reasons and actually I'm thinking about creating a tutorial to show you one of the plugins and how you could use it to actually achieve that. So I hope that this video gave you a different perspective about whether or not you should white label and rebrand the WordPress admin for your clients. Now question of the day, what do you usually do? Do you rebrand the WordPress admin or not? Let me know in the comments. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please like it as it really helps growing this channel. And if you know someone that could benefit from it, please share it now. If you're not yet a subscriber, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and smash the notification bell so that you don't miss anything. Now, if you want to brand, market, and grow your business in the digital age, then make sure you subscribe to my email newsletter so that you never miss a share of Digital Alchemy, as well as tips, tools, services, and case studies that can help you grow your business online. So that's it for this episode. I hope to see you around. And in the meantime, don't forget to invest in your success.